It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, the troublemaking dog. Hello and welcome to the Northwoods Cooking Show. I'm your host, Uncle Roy. And Callie's still up north. Oh. I was at the, at the studio uh, today picking up the equipment and they got a show uh, this lady does for uh, training puppies. Well, let me tell you, I was in several heaven. I go into, this, into the studio and there's like a herd <laughs> of puppies all over the place. Oh my God, they were so cute. I'm just like kisses, kisses all over the place. Oh God, it was so fun. I said, Kelly, Allie, we're here. She just said, come on, kids, let's break it out of here. <laughs> and she'd be running up and down. Oh, she'd be having fun with those puppies. Oh, my God, she'd be going crazy. <laughs> they were so cute. And they had this one with the uh, uh, chow, not the chow, the uh, Chinese one with the loose skin, you know? Oh, it was just a tiny little thing. Just a, It looked like a miniature, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, no, I can't think of his name now. Um, Winston Churchill, <laughs> he looked like him with a wrinkly face. Oh God, it was so cute. He was just a, just a lover. Oh, they all were just little troublemakers. <laughs> anyway, today we're gonna to take and do some French cooking again. And today we're gonna to be making poulet au citron, which is lemon chicken. Hello. <laughs> just that next time you make lemon chicken, you can just tell your friends, poulet au citron. So what we're going to do first though, is pour in a little bit of olive oil. And we want to, I'm not going to make the huge batch because like I said, I'm just cooking for small people. I'm not cooking for a, you know, a family of eight or 10. So I'm just, I'm just, I just got a small thing of uh, chicken there, of chicken thighs. So I'm just going to put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're going to put in just a couple tablespoons of butter. You want the two together for the flavor. One by itself is gonna smoke and could catch fire. So whenever you're cooking with butter or with oil, put a little butter in there and vice versa so that it doesn't smoke. It's so easy to, to combust and catch fire. Then, we're just gonna let that heat up just a little bit. Mix that up. And then I got, oh, about a medium onion. I happen to have three small ones, so I just want to slice those up thin and put those into the pot. And we're going to cook these up, and we don't want to brown, we don't want to caramelize them, we just want to cook them until they're soft. So that should take about four to five minutes. And I got this on like a, ooh, just about a medium heat, a little bit like a medium low almost. We don't want to have a high heat, we don't want to cook them fast, we don't want to brown them, we don't want to get color in them, we just want to keep them uh, more on the white side. So just want them soft and tender. So we'll just let these go and cook and then we'll be right back. Okay, now our onions are nice and tender. Another name would be like, they call that make onions, sweating the onions. And you can see they're nice and tender there and soft. A pale white, almost yellowish. And then we're gonna take and put in our chicken. And I just happen to have thighs, it doesn't matter. You can get a whole chicken cut into pieces if you want to. I'm just gonna do these here. And we're not gonna brown these, we're just gonna cook them and turn them quite frequently on both sides. So we just wanna heat these up. We don't necessarily want to color, because we wanna keep the skin on and we, so we don't wanna brown it, because we wanna have, uh, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of now? We want an even coloring around over the whole chicken here, because it's not gonna be a brown chicken. Because this is gonna be cooked in water and it's gonna be covered so when that boiling goes on, it's gonna be a pale looking chicken. So we're not doing a fried chicken. And we're not doing a stew either, so we don't wanna put a lot of liquid in. So we're gonna cook this now, oh, for about another four to five more minutes. And we'll be right back. Okay, our chicken's just about done here. You can see, oh, where you are. <laughs> As you can see here now, our chicken's nice and soft and tender. And it's still on the yellowish side there, so it's not fully cooked, but we don't want to brown it. 
I got a little, a little teeny mark there, but that's okay. <laughs> Basically, what you want to do is just cook it on a low heat for that amount of time, you know, four to five minutes. Now, we're going to be adding a little salt and pepper. Cypress salt. Oh! Remember this one? From my pack of Christmas salt that I got for Christmas. Mm. This here is this cypress salt. You can use uh, regular salt and pepper, fine. I just want to use my special salt. This is from the Mediterranean Sea. This is the cypress salt. So, remember when Uncle Roy went into the Mediterranean Sea? <laughs> 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 that was too funny. Maybe I'll take and look up that video and stick it in here so you can see it again. It's too cute. So anyway, we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of salt and pepper. So we're going to put in a little pepper. So that's to your taste, you know, more or less, you know, whatever you want. Now we're going to add water. Now, like I said, we're going to be making this lemon chicken. We're going to be making a sauce at the end with the juices. So we don't want to take and make a stew. So you don't pour in a lot of water, just about halfway up to the chicken. We don't want to drown it because we're not making a stew. But we want the moisture in there to cook, you know, to cook the chicken. So go about halfway, halfway up the chicken. Then, I'm gonna turn the heat up on this now. I want this to come to a rolling boil. Put the cover on. And then once this comes to a boil, I'm gonna take and turn it down to, to like about a low, low high. Not quite medium, not medium low, just a notch below medium low. So just like a high low, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Because then we're going to take and let this sit then, uh, cooking in for about, ooh, about 25, 30 minutes or until the chicken's completely done. And you can test that by sticking a fork or a sharp knife into it. And if it's tender, it's done. If it's, you know, a little, a little resistance to when you push in the tool, cook it longer. Oh, I almost forgot. The lemons. <laughs> they go in there too at this time. So you want, you know, like about ooh, four or five slices of lemon. And that's going to stew in there too. And we'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to continue on with our next recipe, and this is going to be, uh, okay, <laughs> let me think now, a salad de arico verde y ris negro de almond. <laughs> it's going to be a green bean salad with uh, black uh, rice, uh, wild rice, and almonds. Now I just took and snapped my beans, got rid of the ends, snip, snip, just snapped those right off. And we're going to put this in our boiling water. Now we're just going to take and blanch these off. So we're not going to cook these completely. We're just going to blanch them off and give these beans a little stir. It takes about three minutes to blanch them. You want to take them out after they turn a bright green. You don't need to bring them back to a boil, you know, cook the heck out of them because we don't we want to keep them crisp and you know and crunchy and we're going to take and then we'll shock them by putting them back into or putting them into the ice cold water now i got the almonds all done and i got slivered almonds and i took and i toasted those in the oven 
The 350 for about, well, until it's, you gotta keep an eye on them. They turn, you know, until they start toasted, lightly brown. You can do that also in a frying pan right on the stove top if you wanna, you know, brown your nuts. That's a good way of doing it too if you don't wanna heat up the oven, like today. <laughs> I forgot all about that. I'm gonna shake a tiny of shake off the excess water here. Let those drain, and then we'll make the dressing. So, for this, we need about, well, about three tablespoons of butter. You want that at room temperature so it's nice and soft. I got about three tablespoons of butter in there. And then you want to cook about three more tablespoons of olive oil. And you have the extra virgin olive oil. That's the kind you use for your dressings. Regular olive oil you can use for cooking. But you want the extra virgin for making your dressing because that's lighter uh, oil. It's not so heavy, it's not greasy. a little whisk and then we're going to put in about oh, a teaspoon of salt and I'll just continue using the Mediterraneans the Cypress salt here oh two tablespoons of lemon juice <laughs> with my arthritis I don't get to squeeze that hurt <laughs> and then we need about a tablespoon of cider vinegar and that's going to give it a nice flavor. Then we'll just take and whisk these together. And you want that butter, like I said, at room temperature. So that it's soft and we can incorporate this into our dressing here. And I'll give my arthritis a workout. <laughs> now we can start putting this together. Next, I'm gonna take and dice up some fresh parsley here. Dice up and chop up fresh parsley, probably like about a third of a cup maybe, quarter to a third of a cup. Mm -hmm. So you do, you know, just pull the leaves off the stem and then just dice it up. Dressing here. And I'm gonna transfer this back into my measuring cup just so that I have it separate. Cause I wanna save some of that dressing for on top of the salad. So it's not completely gone. And then we're gonna drop in our green beans. And our almonds, nice and toasty. And I'm gonna put in like about ooh, two thirds of the almonds. And I'll throw in about a half of my parsley. Well, about two thirds of the parsley. Throw that in there. And then I'm gonna drizzle on a little bit of the dressing. Now, depending upon how much dressing you have, you don't wanna drown it. Let's toss this, this it gets well coated. And I'm gonna put that in a bowl. And I just wanna let that excess dressing get down because I don't wanna drown it. Like I said, you know, if you have a lot of dressing, we well, don't have to use it all up in your, in your dish. You know, it's just by preference. But you don't want it completely drenched. You know, you don't want it soaking. So that's just dripping, you know what I mean? You just, but you want it very well coated. That's all your flavor in there. Presentation. <laughs> And so I got plenty of dressing. I don't need to put any more in, but you can just save this. Just put it in a little Tupperware container and throw it in the refrigerator, well covered. It'll keep for a few, three, three or four days. And I got plenty of almonds. I don't need all of these either. But just, I wanna sprinkle a nice little garnish on top. And of course, I gotta put a little bit more salt on. Just a little sprinkle. Mm -hmm. And then a little pepper at the top. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 almost forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh.
the rice. <laughs> so now this, you can cook up your rice if you want the day before. So that's cool. There we go. Now I can toss this together. Thinking of one thing and doing another. But that's the one thing about my cooking is that when you make mistakes, it didn't ruin the dish. I just forgot to put it in. Just put it back, put it in, and just redo the presentation. So now that we got this in the bowl, I can just get a fresh bowl. I got plenty. I'll do one with a little coloring on this. A little fiesta wear. Got that, I got a whole set of this stuff from, I got it from my brother that passed away. Was living here in Minnesota. He died of AIDS in uh, 2000. So I got this mostly in storage. I don't want to use it until I get my own place someday, you know, where I can take it out, you know, keep it in the cupboard and stuff. Because it's very sentimental to me. You know, it's my, it, was my, it was from my brother, so I don't want to use it like everyday dishes. There we go. We got plenty of leftovers, and this is fine. Just put this in a Tupperware container or keep it in the bowl and cover it with saran wrap. But I'm gonna, I'll transfer that all into a smaller bowl. And then again, we'll just put a little bit. I got plenty of nuts, so we we'll have a nutty salad. And since I didn't use everything, I got plenty left. A little parsley on top. And then that's our salad. That's the Salad de Arrivo, Beret, Riz y Negro Almond, almond Day. <laughs> that means the green bean salad with black rice and almonds. And we'll get a close up when we get, when we dish up the rice or the chicken. Okay, now our chicken's done, and want to get our pot. Reverend McGee, I told you to clean that closet up one of these days. <laughs> Next, we're going to take our chicken now, and oh, butcher. French chef. I had another one around here somewhere. I think it might be on my bed. Okay, then we'll take and or take our chicken and we're gonna pour off the juices. Put that in our kettle. We don't want to bring this back to a boil. I want to keep that low. We just want to keep that heated up. And we need one egg. Refrigerator's full. <laughs> it rarely gets that full. Okay. So, and. Three kids, basically, all got their helmets on. This corner, I tell you, look out this window too and you can see everything in this town. 
<laughs> you know, that's the thing if you sit here and watch it, which I know, but when I'm doing the show, I notice everything. So now we want to mix this up. We don't want to have scrambled eggs on. But what this is going to do is going to bind this, all these juices together. We want to really mix this up so that the egg, it whites and yolks are thoroughly blended. So we don't have a separation of the two. So we don't have curdled whites and yolks. So you want to take and whisk this together. And just pour this in slowly. A little at a time, but constantly be stirring this. Whisk this fast. And just slowly at a time. Like I said, we don't want to have scrambled eggs, but we want to bind this all together so that we have a thicker sauce. If you go too slow, you're gonna get, it's all gonna coagulate on you. And we can put some more lemon juice in there. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, the lemons are hard. Then we'll put our little platter out. And arrange our chicken. Now, I already have rice in my salad, so I'm not gonna put a bed of rice on this, but you could serve this on top of a bed of rice if you want to, or even couscous would be fabulous. And if you put just a, you know, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna make a small batch of rice. Cause I wanna put that on there. Cause I wanna have that rice on there to make that yellow. And I'm gonna put a titch of saffron in the rice. So we'll just take and make another batch of rice and I'll be right back. You remember how to make the rice, correct? Two parts water and one part rice. Bring the water to the boil, add the rice, cover and simmer for 20 minutes. Perfect rice every time. And I'm gonna put a pinch of saffron in there just so we get that yellow golden rice. Okay, so that turned out just beautiful. Here we got the rice with saffron on it. Give it a look at that. Then a little saffron makes the rice so nice and yellow. You just need this taken stirred up a little bit. You just need to fluff it right now. But I mean, when you put your rice in, then the saffron is stirred up a little bit so that saffron gets mixed in with the water generally all over so that it um, colors everything evenly rather than just being stuck. Ooh, that ever pretty. It's worth it if you're gonna do something nice, you know, something French. This makes everything look pretty. And then we got our chicken. Now, when I did the chicken, the, um, I just took this and put this back in the kettle and just put the cover on it and I kept it warm. So now I want to a spoon and was we'll lay the chicken on top of our rice. And because it's lemon chicken, that's why, another reason why I wanted to put the saffron in and color that rice to make it yellow just so that it looks pretty and you get that flavors all together. You know, the presentation makes it pretty then when you got yellow rice to go with the lemon, meat and yellow and all. Let's see, I'm gonna get this down just a little bit more. And then it was garnish with our lemon slices. The sauce has still continued to keep that warm. Just keep it on low. We don't want to cook it. Don't want to bring it to a boil. We don't want to coagulate it. And we just want to take and pour a slightly drizzle the sauce over the top of our chicken, of our uh, poulet au citron. Uh, we don't want to drench it with this gravy or the sauce. Call it what you want. 
That just gives it a flavor. And then we have our sal salad or oricot, bert, bert y gris negro amande. <laughs> I can remember all that. Green bean salad with almonds <laughs> and rice. And we'll get a close-up of that so you can see what that looks like. Okay, and there's our green bean cast or salad with the almonds and rice and wild rice mixed in there too, along with the green beans and the lemon dressing. And then we have the uh, lemon chicken also with the uh, lemons and the onions on top and the chicken with the saffron rice underneath. These turn out really nice and pretty and this is a great summer uh, afternoon meal. Uh, like I said, this is from Nice and this is from Versa. Uh, Versailles. And the green salads from Provencal. Uh, that'd be around the Purdue area, uh, central and uh, eastern. It's south, just north of Nice. So it's just north of the coast where Purdue is. Uh, Provencal salad and from Nice, the chicken. So we hope you enjoy these salads and main course today. Something light and fresh for your summer. And just a wonderful flavor, that fresh lemon juice in there. So, and so from Uncle Roy and Miss Callie, wherever she is, oh, a good cry. We want to say uh, healthy eating, be safe, and spread the sunshine. Bye-bye. <laughs>